What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Lucas and this one's going to be all about grasping the complexity of life. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe because it helps my channel grow and I really appreciate that. You can understand everything in reality. You can understand why politics is the way it is, how human relationships work, how your emotions work, how your mind works, why racism exists. You can understand every single thing, how business works. You can even understand why there is even a reality in the first place. You can understand what the point of everything is. There's so much content within reality. Have you ever noticed this? It's so full of things. There's so much happening in reality. There's science, religion, there's sports, entertainment. There's so much, like, that doesn't even scratch the surface. There's so much stuff happening. And because there's so much content within reality, it's easy for people to get stuck on one thing and spend a lot of their life and energy on some smaller picture idea and end up losing sight of the bigger picture. A lot of people's minds are naturally wired to be more detail oriented and focus on small picture things and ignore the big picture and the vice, the, the opposite is also true. Some people's minds are naturally wired to understand big picture abstract ideas much much easier and prefer those to detail oriented ideas true big picture thinkers are actually very rare it's maybe about 20 percent of the population on earth is really able to create a big picture view of the world it's an awfully rare trait to have. When I say developing a big picture and the people who are able to do this, I mean people who are able to understand hundreds of different worldviews, study them, able to work with complex ideas. They can, they can juggle ideas around effortlessly and they're, they're flexible with what they are letting into their mind and, and letting out. They are masters of ideas. And this doesn't mean that you just believe in random things, but that you actually inquire into topics and no topic sounds too stupid or crazy for you to explore because because you don't know what a topic is until you, <clears throat> until you explore it. People who develop big picture worldviews actually desire to understand the world. They want to know why reality is the way it is and actually figure out what is true for themselves rather than accepting the status quo, rather than believing in the things that were passed on to them. They really want to inquire into many different worldviews, science, religion, and each little subcategory within science and religion. I'm just pulling out these two examples. So like chemistry, physics, biology, or like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Jainism, Buddhism, Hinduism, and keep, you know, really looking at all like they, they want the whole thing. They want to understand all the topics, all these big picture ideas and these big picture topics, and then they connect them together. They connect seemingly unrelated things together, like mysticism and science, for example. <clears throat> when we are born, we are continuously being programmed with various ideologies and beliefs. Depending on the household that you grow up, this, this really determines how you're going to act for the rest of your life. Many people, if they're born into a highly religious household, they will remain religious forever. 
or a conservative household, they will remain conservative or liberal or atheist, scientific, academic. A lot of kids adopt the ideologies of their, their parents. And we are programmed with what is good, bad. We're programmed with what is right and wrong, how we should discover what is true, what political party to vote for, what countries are good and bad, what religion is right, whether science is good or not, what food to eat, and how to actually act. This is all indoctrinated into us at, a, at an extremely young age, before we can actually independently think, before we even have a real working mind. The mind takes its programming very seriously because this is how it makes sense of reality. It takes its ideas and ideologies and it grounds itself in these ideas and ideologies. This is literally how you live. Imagine if you, you woke up tomorrow and you had no clue what the hell anything was or what you are or what you're doing here. <laughs> when you are trying to learn anything at all, what you want to do is understand. That's what you're desiring. You, you desire understanding. You want, an actual, you want to grasp what something is. And the mind understands reality using ideas. And then with this collection of ideas, it creates this whole conceptual matrix. It has beliefs and assumptions and what it thinks is true and false. And it then identifies with this, this matrix. So examples are like, I am a Christian. There's a, a whole worldview that comes with that. Or I am a liberal. There's a whole way of thinking, an entire value system that actually comes with the statement, I am a conservative or I am a liberal and identifying with it. There's a whole way of being. Since we are heavily conditioned from a young age to believe certain ideas and not other ideas, we enjoy believing that our current understanding of the world is just true. It's the case. It's just all that is. And maybe you're a little bit, you're a little bit more humble. You say, okay, yeah, there's a lot of things I don't know, but you know, whatever, science will figure them out in the next hundred years. Or, you know, we pretty much have it down. We kind of know what's going on. And there's maybe a few things we don't know and, you know, whatever, like people will figure it out. This is beyond me. I can't do it. See, this is a mechanism that the mind can use to ignore real self-reflection and real growth, real, a, a real deconstruction of its current belief system. The mind does not like to question its current conceptual framework because this feels like someone has pulled the ground out from underneath you. You feel totally groundless, nervous, kind of anxious, because now all of a sudden you don't know what's true. If you start questioning your worldview, if you, if you identify as a Christian and then you, you seriously you know, question Christianity, then how can you be a Christian anymore? Imagine, imagine growing up in a Christian household and for 20 years, the first 20 years of your life, you are taught Christianity and that this is the truth. And that someone like me on YouTube just starts questioning Christianity. See, the mind will have a, a deep emotional reaction to, to what's being heard because you have put a lot of your emotional labor into constructing that worldview and keeping that ideology, really identifying with it. And if I were to question that, and if you were to take that seriously, it would really shock you. It would, it doesn't matter what like belief system it is. It can be science, politics, it can be literally anything. If I start questioning your identity in general, you can feel very nervous or like you're even being physically attacked. 
So you, you can't ask people to just drop their belief system because it doesn't work like that. See, they are attached to that belief system. They're attached to this way of thinking. You are attached to a certain way of thinking. And people often are paradigm locked into their own worldview. They pick a perspective like Christianity and then that's it. They don't study the, the other traditions. They ground themselves and their current identity in these thought patterns and in that way of making sense of the world. If you were to consider that you are wrong or not entirely correct, then this can actually cause like a crisis in your life. Because this now, it's not a matter of like, okay, I guess I'm wrong about a couple things. It's your whole worldview is being pulled apart and you have to quickly construct a new one, a new explanation for why reality exists and what is true, what's good and bad. It is extremely rare for people to go above the level of development that they grew up in. So that's why whatever country you were born in, odds are the majority of people will not go above that culture's level of development unless the unless people have a true desire to go beyond it and it really takes a lot of work to to truly self-actualize when a human's ideology is questioned this is taken extremely personally because we humans are extremely identified with our minds, with our ideas of reality, with our thoughts. We feel as though our thoughts and beliefs are just what we are and not something that we collected and not something that we were programmed with. Odds are if you're a Christian, then you're only a Christian because your parents were a Christian or you were brought up in that household. You most likely did not you know, consider the religion or think about it. It was just something you were indoctrinated with. Very rarely do people sit down and you know, question worldviews and you know, come up with you know, their own. And you know, even if you were to do that, see, how do you know it's true? There's so much complexity within life that you can't sell yourself to one worldview. You have to actually question every single one and not just wave it away like it's bullshit, but look for both the bullshit and the truth in every worldview. So something outrageous like, you know, the Nazis in World War II. See, if I say you can actually learn from them, see, immediately this sounds like, holy, like, holy crap, bro, this guy's insane. You can learn from the Nazis, but See, they had a profound passion just for being German. And see, that is something that is great, but obviously it's really toxic in a million other ways. But you see how there's actually a nugget of wisdom and gold within that perspective. See, you can go within that perspective, toss away the bullshit, and then pull out the, 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 the kernels of truth, the, the golden nuggets. What is accurate about that worldview? Humans identify with any possible worldview. It doesn't matter if you're religious or scientific, you're an atheist, politics, anything. Every possible worldview you can identify with. And these worldviews are like costumes. These are artificial identities or artificial roles that we construct and then we truly believe to be ourselves. Like, I am a Christian or I am white. See, when, when you see like a four or five year old pretending to be Superman and like they're pretending to fly, if you tell him to stop pretending, see, he might get a little pissed off because he wants to play Superman, but he knows he's pretending. He knows he's not actually Superman. Whereas most adults or other human beings, if you tell them, hey, you're not actually white, you're not your skin, and you start questioning their identity, 
See, now it's, see, now it can be threatening to people. They aren't aware that they are imagining this, this identity that they believe themselves to be. If you were to question any person's worldview, they would immediately, unless they are a truly self-actualized human being, but that's very rare, almost everyone will immediately feel some sort of emotional connection and attachment to their way of thinking, some sort of identification with the way that they are thinking. <clears throat> if you question the, the scientific method within establishment science, you're not going to be, you're not going to be, you know, cheered on. You see, you're going to be demonized and ostracized. You'll, you'll probably get kicked out. They'll probably, they'll tell you, get the hell out of here. You're questioning their way of making sense of reality, which, see, is a smart thing to do, no doubt, instead of just blindly accepting, okay, this is the method. It's like, okay, what if there's other ways of gathering data about the world that we are just currently ignorant of like what are the limitations of the scientific method you see like maybe we have to take into account our own psychology and our own level of consciousness see if you were to ask these questions to real hardcore scientists a lot of them won't care they'll, they'll just think you're an idiot the mind wants certainty this is the actual problem with with this situation, people want to feel certain about their worldview. And when you start to poke holes in their worldview and ask questions that open them up to new ideas, see, this is a, a scary thing because now there's not as much certainty. Now there's room for confusion. There's room for paradox. There's room for contradict, contradictory statements. And people don't like that. If you are honest with yourself, then you will admit that most of your worldview came from your culture, your parents, or your friends. Which means that you never really sat down and like questioned whether like Christianity is true, or like Islam is true, or science is true. You never actually derived the answers for yourself, but you pretty much blindly accepted them from the people around you. Most of what you know, you consider knowledge, is just thought patterns and belief systems that you were programmed with and indoctrinated with. Humans are extremely robotic beings, and we love to just get lost in our own robotic habits. And I'll share some examples. A really obvious one that everyone can relate to is when we feel itchy, if your nose is itchy, there's a knee jerk reaction to just scratch your nose. Okay, you don't really think like I am scratching my nose and you're not aware of like the, the whole process. It's just like a very knee jerk reaction. You're, it's a very robotic reaction, it's automatic. When we are indoctrinated into ideas of right and wrong, good and bad, our minds also become very robotic. These are thought patterns that we get stuck in and we are unable to think outside of our programming until someone comes in and, you know, wakes us up a little bit or we current, you know, we outgrow what we are currently thinking. When our ideas are questioned, we usually react unconsciously and perceive this questioning as an attack on us personally. So like if I go into establishment science and start questioning it, it's, it's going to be the case that people there will take it personally, like I'm attacking them. But really what I would be doing is just questioning the scientific paradigm. But they have this identity around science, which then creates this closed-mindedness, this dogmatic and ideological way of thinking. And it's the same with religion, 
politics, different philosophies, whatever. What I talk about a lot on my channel is the deconstruction of worldviews and ideas. So what happens when you return to your natural state? What is your most natural state? What happens when all philosophical viewpoints are removed and deconstructed? When you have no beliefs left, what is left then? What happens if we stop confusing our thoughts for reality? What happens if we stop creating these fake identities? And I'll, a I'll answer one of those questions. What happens when all philosophical viewpoints, beliefs, or and beliefs are removed and deconstructed? The, the actual truth of what reality is remains because the truth about reality doesn't need a belief, okay? Like, it's true now. What reality is, it's true. And you don't have to believe in it in order to, to get it. That'll often screw you over, actually. What I talk about never actually requires belief. I actually challenge people to explore various points of view and see reality from new angles that they didn't previously know. Some views are very simple and some views are very complex. Reality is extremely profound and complex. There are so many ways to make sense and see the world and some are more accurate than others. And some are partially right but they don't grasp the full truth and some are totally wrong. Some are like 99% wrong. <laughs> a good example of something that is partially right is science. See, science loves to use small pictures instead of the big picture. Science is extremely guilty of this. Consider for a moment that your views are not absolutely true, but they are only true within a certain context, within a certain way of viewing the world. Some views are only true within the, a smaller picture, but when we zoom out, they actually become less and less true. This is extremely true with, with science. Science is amazing at reporting facts small picture facts about the world, like raw data and measurements. But science doesn't take into account the big picture. Science assumes that if we just collect enough minor facts about reality, then we will eventually grasp what it is and then we will be done. And we have to realize that that is an assumption and that is a belief. I am not arguing that science is like useless or something or that like we, we, we should stop science, but science is in fact a belief system and there are all sorts of assumptions that come with, you know, science. See, if you are dedicated to science that you, like you believe that science will deliver you the truth. But science is actually one way of viewing the world. From the most objective standpoint, science is one perspective. Science hates to admit that it is in fact a belief system because the, the scientific paradigm was actually created because they had a reaction against religion. So... Religion used to dictate what science could and couldn't do until the, the two were separated from each other. And Galileo is a, a perfect example of science separating from religion. This is a, a very common story that a lot of people have heard. So Galileo was a astronomer who um, had, he, he observed a lot of, you know, observable truths about, you know, reality, like the moons around Jupiter, I believe, and I, uh, a lot of other things. 
And this contradicted the, the, the church's views of reality. See, the mind doesn't like questioning itself. And when something, when something contradicts the mind's current worldview, it gets really defensive. So this contradicted the church's worldview and they labeled the telescope the, the devil's instrument. Instead of just looking through it and, and seeing that they were wrong, they couldn't do that because they're too identified and attached to their current worldview that they were unable to step outside of their worldview, go meta on it, see it from a bigger picture, and just look through the damn telescope and see the, see the moons. Like, it, it was pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so science is a reaction against blind faith in religion. And see, this blind faith in like religion and like spirits or stuff like that, it, science swings its pendulum all the way to the other side and it ends up blindly believing in rationality, explicit external evidence that can be validated using the, the scientific method and objective reality. These are, these are the, the dogmas of science. These are all beliefs, these are all ways that the mind tries to interpret reality. And science is great, I love science. But there are ways of understanding reality beyond the mind, beyond rationality, beyond external physical evidence. And science completely rejects this and acts as if it can get away with, with it. If you begin to, to seriously question a scientist, they feel personally attacked just like the religious person in the same way, it's the same mental mechanism at work. Suddenly, uh, a rationalist scientist, just rational skeptic scientist, see it, it doesn't become logical. That argument is no longer logical, but actually becomes more about feeling. See, there's a, a common theme within science of just rationality and, you know, the facts and logic and uh, a pushing away of emotion, which is really unhealthy for the human psyche. Um, but the facts and logic are actually driven by emotions. When scientists value facts and logic, they are unconsciously stating how they feel about the facts. Human beings are extremely emotional. Logic and reason is actually a, a great mechanism that your mind uses to fool itself. See, Hitler used reason and logic to start World War II. See, to his mind, that seems totally reasonable, totally logical nothing wrong with that all all of that all, all of the world's injustices all these evil people they use reason to you know justify what they're doing in court a, a lawyer uses reason to defend you know a guilty murderer or something See, lawyers are known for being rather dishonest and they use reason to fool people. And your mind actually uses reason and logic to fool itself. So you have to go meta on reason and logic and really just be aware of the, the mechanisms of your mind. There are ways of gathering information about reality that science completely ignores and if you were to attempt to bring this information to them they would often label it nonsense or pseudoscience like higher states of consciousness and meditation they they would not see this as a valid method most of them at least a lot actually do though a lot are really open-minded but i'm just i'm i'm currently criticizing the the, the dogmas of science but there's a lot of, a lot of really open-minded scientists. If you actually look into the greatest scientists of all time, Albert Einstein, Niels Bohr, Werner Heisenberg, Max Planck, all these guys, they were extremely 
profound thinkers, not because you know you put them on this pedestal, they're geniuses, but we actually understand why that is using developmental psychology. They could look at the world in a paradoxical, counterintuitive way that juggles different ideas and perspectives. So a lot of these guys were thinking like mystics, to be honest, like, you know, Werner Heisenberg talks about the observer can never be separated from the observed. Schrodinger talks about how everything's one and everything is consciousness. Max Planck talks about how everything is consciousness. Albert Einstein says reality is uh, uh, a very like tricky illusion, something, something like that. Reality, it's like reality is an illusion, albeit uh, a very persistent one, something like that. I don't quote me on that one. He also says uh, separation is an illusion. Uh, is an illusion. See, these guys are actually thinking very philosophically, kind of, but more like they're more like mystics in the way that they are making sense of the world because these guys could actually juggle very different ideas like they they took the cutting edge science of quantum mechanics and then related it to mysticism and they're like holy shit like these relate like very well okay i don't mean to to pick on science but this is this is just a perfect example because the mind hates turning inward and questioning its own ways of making sense of reality that's that point is really the why, like I said everything previously about, about science. The mind doesn't want to question its own belief system. And it actually fools itself into thinking that it doesn't have a belief system, which is what a lot of scientists have actually done. What is actually true about reality doesn't need defending it doesn't have to be proved and it doesn't need to be argued and debated about the truth is simply it simply is it's already true it's already the case if someone is defending the truth about reality from an ideological position po uh, pos position <laughs> then that means that they don't have the truth they have ideas about reality that they have mistaken for the truth, for actual reality itself, and then they've identified with their ideas. It isn't actually possible to know anything about reality without grasping the whole of it. The content within reality, it's content like me right here and like this, this water bottle and the grass and the trees, all these little parts are insep... They're, they're, not separate, they're inseparable from realities like the totality of it all, from the whole. Its individual parts are infinitely interconnected and actually completely one with the whole. Because it's like this is reality, okay? Like this right here. This isn't just a part of reality, this is actually the whole of it too, which is very hard to understand logically. I talk a lot about transcending logic, but this is reality right here. Whatever is absolutely true about reality must include the water bottle because this is reality. This right here. In order to know what the best political system is or the best way to do science, the best way to do healthcare, the best anything, you actually need to understand what reality fundamentally is at its core, since all these things are in fact reality and completely inseparable from what reality fundamentally is. So conservatives versus liberals, who's correct? Which one do you vote for, okay? Like, which party is more corrupt? objectively which one is more corrupt which party is pushing society towards the next level of human development and which one is clinging on to the outdated old ways of of being are both parties somewhat true and somewhat false and which one is more true than the other and these are all answerable questions many people within politics they they love to get some small picture idea and they act as if this is the full truth. See, conservatives will say something that liberals 
do poorly and vice versa. Liberals will say something that conservatives do poorly and both sides will become ideological about some small picture perspective while ignoring the full truth of the situation. And there is a political party that is more psychologically evolved than the other. And you can figure out which one that is. Everything I talk about here is 100% answerable. And I actually encourage you to do your own independent investigation instead of blindly accepting any idea that I say, okay? Blindly accepting anything I say would actually dig you even deeper into the, the hole that you're currently stuck in. And this hole is all about the inability to distinguish truth from falsehood. See, most people are deeply locked into the worldview that they currently hold and they can't look outside it. They actually can't inquire into the truth about a, about a situation because they don't see reality for what it is, but how it can serve them and how it relates to them and their current way of thinking about it. A lot of people can't distinguish truth from falsehood. They can't distinguish higher from lower perspectives. And they don't know how to discover the big picture. And a lot of what I'm saying here sounds too like lofty and philosophical, but these ideas are very, very practical. They relate to your everyday life, your current emotional state, the current way you think about this present moment right here. And they have real world consequences because the big picture contains all of your little small picture facts. And you actually need the big picture in order to truly get what these small picture facts are. Because the small picture facts are only true within a certain context. If I were to rearrange the context, then they aren't as like solid as we would assume, as we assumed they were. Within this world are hundreds of ideologies. Some are more accurate than others, some are more toxic, and some not so much. And minds like to duplicate themselves. People want to convert other people to their beliefs in order for that person's mind to feel more comfortable within its own paradigm. Imagine if everyone around you all believed the exact same thing. See, no one would really be questioning the status quo, and that would be an absolute utopia for the ego. Check out my video, What is the Ego? Because the ego would never have to turn inwards and seriously question itself. When everyone around you believes in the same thing, it now feels way more grounded and certain because he, he's saying the same thing, everyone's saying the same thing. In that case, questioning the status quo would actually threaten your chances of survival. So, you know, back when, you know, church and state weren't separated and really religion ran the show, there were all sorts of people that were, you know, killed for, you know, going out against the church. You see, like, Galileo was, you know, the devil's instrument. And even, uh, I believe, named Giord Giordano Bruno, I think he was a... I think he was Italian, I'm not entirely sure, but I know, I think he was a Catholic monk, and he actually was talking more about mysticism and a, a direct awareness of what reality is, rather than the, 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 the religious dogma at the time, and he was actually, I, I think, burnt at the stake. Even though he was a Catholic, he, he was a Christian. It has nothing to do with, with what's true. These, these ideologies. They have everything to do with defending themselves. If you look at Gandhi, Jesus, Martin Luther King, see, what, what was that all about? That was all about people seriously changing and questioning the status quo to try and create something more conscious, more accurate, more true, more loving, and more evolved. And people reacted negatively against that because it involved 
questioning their current ways of thinking. And they were all killed. <laughs> the only way to get the truth of something is to derive it for yourself. Science will not give it to you. Religion won't either. I won't. Your parents won't. Your school won't. No one will. The majority of people don't have anywhere near an accurate view of the world. And they will still attempt to indoctrinate you with their ideas because to them it's accurate see the mind doesn't say to itself i have falsehood i haven't uh, i'm distorting reality so your mind doesn't say that your mind just thinks ideas and then that, that's it you ground yourself in your mind you identify yourself with the mind and its ideas in order for you to truly develop an accurate worldview and make sense of everything, understand the complexity of life, you have to go on the, the inner journey and discover the big picture for yourself or else you will feel stuck. You're going to remain trapped within the limitations of your own mind. Okay, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. If you guys want to see more, subscribe. If you guys have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.